Mr. Chicket, a name which doesn't need any introduction, a force to be reckoned with. Behind the man of God you see on the pulpit is a very rich and touching history. Today we bring to you the diary of Pastor Isaac Samuel II. small documentary on the journey of Pastor Isaac Samuel II since he became a pastor and a few among many witnesses of his incredible journey. We will first hear from his lovely wife from the time they arrived in Cyprus and what transpired next. We arrived in Cyprus um, 2008 February. When we came to Cyprus there was no um, there are churches, but there was no evangelical church, so to speak. We gathered our flatmates then and started a morning devotion. Every morning we gather together in the flat, we sing praises to God, worship, then Pastor Isaac will share the word. But not long after that, God spoke to Pastor Isaac to start church. I had a dream one night. I saw him in a big congregation with very many dignitaries in minds. Some of them in the church, some outside, everywhere. They were there to ordain him as a priest or as a pastor. Where I was, I witnessed it in the dream. And today, at that dream, actually, I refused to tell anybody, not even his father. I didn't tell him as well until years ago when I visited Cyprus, when he started his ministry. It now came on me. I didn't even tell him directly. I told his wife, I said, Look at the dream I had some time ago. That is what God has ordained him to be. And that's the dream I had no time ago. The first meeting was held and a total of five people attended it. And henceforth, the man of God hasn't turned back. From Sunday to Sunday, he preached his heart out. Though it was a handful of people, he preached like he was ministering to thousands and thousands of people. In no time, the fellowship gradually began to grow to an extent that they had to rent out hotel conference rooms, which cost quite a lot, but he was forever determined to continue. Church was constantly growing, people were coming and being blessed. At a point, we also used houses of um, some brethren that were in church then. We used their living rooms, we, lived, we used our house again when we moved from where we were until we go to permanent place that we are in now. We started really small, not, not much. But if I could remember, because I was part of the Uchu department, and it was the first time for me seeing like the manifestation power of God in action. So it wasn't just, you could, if you could, I could feel the presence of God. You could see people coming, just because we could feel the power there, like for me as well. People were saying testimonies, people got blessed. With so many things like this happening, that was from stage to stage. You could see the anointing is increasing. And as the anointing is increasing, we are growing in numbers. We are growing in numbers as well. So, you know how these things are. When one miracle happens, it, the news we fly, people started coming and calling. It was always going out, praying for people, or people were coming to church to be prayed for. So the miracles were a constant thing, and God never failed. Every time He shows up. Pastor Isaac, I came to his church at, um, at the early age of the church. But when I saw that young man growing up, oh my God, I, I, am, the, I am just like, want to see, more to hear more of him every day by day. 
when I started coming to that church, I remember I used to go to my church and I would run back to this church. That is how much I want to hear what he's going to say next. I would go to my church, I would run back to his church before I decided, okay, let me just stay here permanently because I need some, some of the, the Simon. Growing in the things of God made him get exposed to some spiritual realities. The Holy Spirit directed him to start watching a particular man of God who was into deliverance and the prophetic. Initially, Pastor Isaac Samuel II felt it a bit weird watching the man of God's videos because he was used to a different kind of ministration. But he followed the prompting of the Spirit of God. He later discovered that God called him into the office of a prophet with a healing and deliverance ministry too. The man of God began to have one-on-one -on -one ministrations at church. Boy, miracles started to reign. It was healing after healing. People who were tormented by demons were set free. The power of God was moving mightily in church. The church membership was also increasing greatly as well. I think that would be... 2012 or 13 when God started directing him to the into the ministry of prophecy and deliverance so he would pray for people he would prophesy like detailed prophecies every year was something new at first the healing was just for it now later on it's not prophecy. This is a spot on prophecy. So it wasn't just healing anymore. It came prophecy. There was prophecy now. Deliverance. You could see, you could just literally know that these are not things increasing, that there's more fire now. But all of a sudden, everything was put to a standstill. The man of God was taken to the detention center by the Cyprus immigration because his documents had expired. A tough and trying period, not just for him, not just for the church, but especially for his family too. Because at this point in his life, the man of God had two little children. One was three and the other was only one year old. I didn't feel bad. I just, as a wife, I, was, I missed my husband. The kids, they missed him as well. They are always asking, where is daddy? When is daddy coming back? It was a long journey for us. When I realized that he wasn't coming back anytime soon, I was alone with the kids, but you know, I didn't give up hope. From that very first day, I organized a prayer meeting every night, 10 p.m. We prayed, me and the leaders would pray for his release. In that uncomfortable state, with very limited privacy and freedom, he never questioned God. He didn't lose his faith, but instead, he found a way to be a blessing to those in discomfort with him in the detention center. By the leading of the Holy Spirit, the man of God began to pray for people inside, and mind-blowing testimonies were erupting after the prayers. During his stay in the detention center, he was preaching for two hours every day, being a source of inspiration to those inside. It was something good. It gave us more hope to believe that we we have we have we are not alone. We have we have somebody carrying on along. It ministered to some people. Some people have cancer was healing. Some people have have mental illness far away from Sri Lanka. They also got healed. I still remember some people. Some people came from outside to see him, to minister to them. Yeah, even police officers gather, give him space to do the, the job of, do the work of God. Yeah, people were surprised because it's not, something, it's not happened before. The man of God, Pastor Isaac Samuel II, after a period of five and a half months was released, but on that day, his heart left Cyprus. Though he was delighted to be united with his lovely family and the brethren at church, he was now on the lookout on the next step of the Spirit. A few months later, his life took another swing, and it seemed like he was going in the wrong direction. God told him to leave Cyprus and go to Nigeria. It was quite a difficult decision to make because he had just gotten out of the detention center and his wife was a few months pregnant at that time. 
Was he just going to leave his pregnant wife and his two little children? And also, what was going to happen to church? Ever defiant to the prompting of the flesh, he chose to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, leaving everything else in the hands of God, and he left for Nigeria on 15 November 2015. Mm. <laughs> mm, 2016. I tried all I could do to dissuade him to no avail. So when I found out I was playing, I was happy. Because I thought that would you know, change his mind and make him stay. Because I really didn't want him to go to Nigeria. We had arguments over it and all that, but his mind was made up. Being a servant of God, he continued to serve God in the best possible way he could. He personally organized a couple of programs while in Nigeria, which turned out successful as dozens were healed up from different kinds of affliction and many were delivered from the oppression of evil spirits. One faithful day, he decided to call one of his old-time friends to check up on him. Somewhere in 2016, I think middle of 2016, I do remember clearly how you, you called me on the phone. Then I was back in our home country, Nigeria, and you called me and said, look, you know, you had you were thinking in a certain direction and I said listen I'm glad you called me now because in the next one week I'll be in, in the city of New York so you were like wow thank God you know perfect though. that's just the right time so we discussed it and at the end of the day <clears throat> we reasoned it out and you know it was clear that this was the right this was the right you know direction America was the way to go now, the man of God had a valid U.S. visa, but he was waiting for the leading of the Spirit of God. In that waiting process, he went back to the island of Cyprus. He kept telling those in his inner circle that he's waiting for a U.S. connection, and the connection came through an unexpected way. God told him to start watching his cousin's video on Facebook, the woman of God, evangelist Princess Belimzi. During his interaction with the woman of God, they both discovered they had a kindred kind of anointing. Within a few months, it was going to be Evangelist Princess Belemzi's birthday and to celebrate her special day, she decided to do a three days program which the man of God was specially invited to come and minister. That's how the US connection came to fruition. I remember inviting you on my video July, was it July? Yes, July of 2017 on Facebook. And that day was amazing. I can never forget. God led me to invite you. And I did not know that God had told you to watch my videos. But God led me to invite you. And I don't regret it. Because God knew that I needed a friend. Someone that I could, I could trust. Somebody that I could talk to that would understand where I'm coming from and you are my friend the moment i invited you on that video my followers loved you just like that who will come come across pastor isaac someone the second i would not love nobody everybody once people come across you they have contact in fact just even listening to you talk people fall in love with you you are just so real your messages are wonderful. You know how to preach and really dissect the word. You make people understand. Even a new believer can comfortably sit down and listen to your message and be blessed. My followers on my love you so much. Before you know it, God led me to invite you to my birthday celebration at Three Days Holy Ghost Encounter in Houston, Texas, last year, 2000. 17 2017 September I remember that day like it was just yesterday you came into town I think on the 25th all the way from Cyprus my god I was even on live video when you came that day and we even videoed it it still feels like it was yesterday but that's your coming changed so many things so yeah I was again at the point of like not seeing my husband again 
this time around I, I wasn't um i didn't fight him so to speak uh, i was okay with him going to america on getting to america he thought maybe he'll join his friend in new york and start working there to sustain himself and his family however god had better plans for him the man of god bishop blessing samuel was going to nigeria for a while therefore he left his church in the hands of pastor isaac samuel ii the man of god continued to serve faithfully praying for people and counseling them he never looked back on not helping others from state to state in america the man of god pastor isaac samuel ii and the woman of god evangelist princess belimzi started touring the country a couple of holy ghost encounter programs and it's time for your miracle programs were organized by the leading of the holy spirit and yielded unquantifiable results souls were won for christ dozens received instant healing demons of darkness were kicked out and the name of jesus was glorified from state to state and nation to nation i feel like amazed i look at him i'm like is this is it the same guy i got married to that i know when you see him walking in another level by the stretch of his hands demons tremble by the stretch of his hands people get healed when i see all that i, I feel so amazed and these things actually humble me thank god you came because since you came somewhere around 2017 i guess you've been a blessing to the american people you brought a sort of revival and uh, a knowledge of god that is on parallel when we travel together me you sometimes bishop comes with us we have so much fun my followers love you and lately they are calling you jamaican because <laughs> you can rap <laughs> that's you that's you that made that up we were just um recently in los angeles california for a two days holy ghost encounter and you came up with that you can just come up with stuff like that and people will love it when the man of god is ministering he would often say check it referring to the pain if it's still there he says it very frequently more or less every time he's ministering to the extent that people started to identify him as Mr. Check It. You said you were feeling numb on your finger. Check that finger now. You have a feeling now. Yes. Numbness for how long? Three years. For three years. And the numbness is gone. Listen to me. Jesus has started healing you already. Yes. Check it. Check it now. You're feeling much better? But the check it is no longer just about him. It's now a movement. God led the man of God to anoint water and different materials so that they can be used as instruments against the wiles of the devil. Countless testimonies have come in from the use of the anointed materials. They are a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Now all over the world, numerous individuals are checking it. Wearing the check it regalia, boldly confessing that God has done it. I remember also calling you Pastor Check It because you are very confident in what you do for the Lord. Once you pray for somebody, you say check it, they check it, they are healed. And before you know it, Check It became a brand name. Every household wants to get Check It item, highly anointed stuff. Back in February, I sent him I um, actually carried a, a t-shirt to Maryland and it had check it on it and um, it was not until March when he actually wore um, the t-shirt in New York where everyone started asking him about the t-shirt because he was known as um, Pastor Check It, you know, so um, I think it was just all natural really when he started wearing the t-shirt and everyone um, started asking about um, the t-shirt and since then it has really taken off. The materials have gone all around the world. We have shipped to all, I think all five continents of the world if I'm not mistaken and testimonies have been pouring in. People use the anointed water 
and they get healed the prayer cloth they check it and um, band t-shirts check it really means um god has done it it um it comes from first john 5 14 which says um basically that if this is the confidence that we have in christ that anything that we ask um, as long as it's according to god's will for us that he hears us and if he hears us why wouldn't he answer us so whenever pastor prays for someone he is so sure that god has heard, heard his prayer that he says check it this is just but an introduction of the diary of pastor isaac samuel is taken but guess what there is more so I have so much to say about you, but time will not permit me to say this, but I want to tell you that I'm so glad that you came into my life. I love you as my brother, as my cousin, as my fellow servant of God, as my spiritual brother, and like somebody had called you uh, a spiritual uncle, right? You are my spiritual brother. I love your family, your wife, Pastor Christabel. I love your children. I love how you love your wife and your children. You are a wonderful husband. That's about how busy you can get with ministry. You still spend time to cater for your, for your family. You still spend time on the phone with your wife and your kids. I've never seen anyone like you. You always spend time with them. This is like on a daily basis. It doesn't matter how far you travel. You still take care of family. And that's something I really admire about you. You don't you don't get carried away with work. You still include family. No matter how long you spend out there working, when you come back, you will still call that that's a good husband. So you you are so many, you're so gifted. You have so many gifts. You're good when it comes to the things of God. You're good in your family. You're good as a friend. And people can see this. A lot of my followers say you are very humble, and I agree. I've learned so much from you. I've learned about humility. I've learned to be patient. And you also prayed for me when I requested for prayers, asking for all your gifts. And I'm glad I did because I got all your gifts plus your face. When I'm trying to cast out a demon, mm, who are you? <laughs> you know, I love you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor Isaac Samuel the second. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip, hip. <laughs> Happy birthday, Pastor Isaac Samuel II. On behalf of Princess Belemzi Ministries and all my followers, my workers, and our family, I want to wish you happy, happy birthday. You're such a wonderful man, and I love you so much. You are highly anointed. You are a great servant of the Most High God. You are very humble, very wise, very caring, and very attentive. You love people. Most of all, you love God passionately. Pastor Isaac, as a mother, I'm proud to be your mother. I am very happy, and I'm, I give God the glory. I join the host of heaven to say happy birthday to you, son. God bless you. Oh, God. Only I just want to tell you, I love you so much. I adore you. You're my superhero. You're my superstar. I don't know what my life would have, would have turned out to be had we not met. I don't know where I'll be today if you were not in my life. So I pray for more wisdom for him. And more grace in his ministry. And God bless him. I take this opportunity to greet Pastor Isaac and wish him happy birthday. May God continue to increase him more and more to win more souls. 
for the kingdom of light. I just want to say once again, thank you. Um, happy birthday, man of God. The day that um, you were born on this earth was a tremendous blessing. So once more, I want to say happy birthday. Uh, the best is yet to come because uh, you are living your dream. And that's, that's my joy for you. Happy birthday, Pastor Isaac Samuel II. I celebrate you. And um, I know that me and you will always work together. And I see God taking you to another level. And I'm glad to be a part of this. Thank you so much for being a wonderful friend, a wonderful brother, a wonderful cousin, a wonderful husband, a wonderful daddy, and a wonderful pastor. May God bless you, may God keep you, may God protect you. I pray for fresh fire, you know how I say my own, fresh anointing, more grace, power in the name of Jesus. Once again, happy birthday from me, Evangelist Princess Belemzi, from Princess Belemzi Ministries, and from our family, my son, my workers, we all love you. Enjoy your day. I love you. Uh, happy birthday, Daddy. Uh, happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday, Daddy. Good. Happy birthday, Pastor. Thank you so much for all the teachings and the lessons. And I'm so glad that my path clashed with yours because I've learned so much and I greatly appreciate it. Happy birthday, sir. Salutes. Thank you, Pastor. Happy birthday once more. And I love you. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you for being a blessing to me and my family and everyone. We celebrate you and we love you. Happy birthday, sir. And today is your day. I wish you a very happy birthday. And my prayer for you every day is that God gives you more grace, more anointing, more fire, more zeal, more angels to do the work that He has called you to do. Happy birthday. I love you. Happy birthday, Pastor Isaac Summer. Many more years and more grace. Happy birthday, Pastor Isaac Summer. We, your church members, will love you all. Happy birthday, Pastor Isaac. Wish you many more. God bless you. Happy birthday, Pastor Isaac Samuel. May God bless you and give you all you need. Happy birthday, sir. Pastor Isaac Samuel. Happy birthday, Pastor Isaac Samuel. We wish you more years to come. Happy birthday, Pastor Isaac Samuel. Wish you more life. Thank you. Happy birthday, Pastor Samuel Isaac. We wish you many more years. Hello, Mr. Isaac Samuel. I've been a fan of your ministry for a while, and I follow your social media platform. You probably don't know me, but I want to wish you a very happy birthday. And I, I connected the blessing and from your anointing. Happy birthday, Pastor Isaac Samuel. God bless you. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you for everything you've taught me. I'm a better man because of it. Thank you, sir. Happy birthday. I wish you all the best, and I love you. I miss you so much, sir. Pastor Isaac, I wish you many more birthdays. Happy birthday, sir. Uh, wish you a happy birthday. I love you, sir. Merry Christmas to my beloved Pastor Isaac and happy birthday to you. Wishing you the best. See you in 2019. Merry Xmas, Papa. And happy birthday. May the good Lord bless you and increase you more in your life. In Jesus' name. Happy birthday, Pastor. We love you. Thank you so much, sir. Ah!